QuickBooks 7 Receivable Aging Report for Accounts Receivable and Bank Reconciliation. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And you can find us on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. I wanted to jump over to my Excel document and talk about Accounts Receivable Aging Schedule, which I think is a valuable tool for businesses who are trying to manage cash flow. And it talks about how quickly am I collecting money from my sales? How quickly am I collecting money from my sales? So the path to get there is reports, company financial. We're going to go into customer receivables, which is a different report we haven't looked at yet, and go to the aging details. So let's try to do that. Reports, company financial. And I'm going to skip down to customer receive, customers and receivables, and you'll see there's a whole list of reports here that we haven't looked at yet. And I'm going to go to AR Aging Detail. And here's what we see. I've loaded in a lot of um, invoices, and I'm going to, in fact, change the report to this fiscal year to date and refresh, just to make sure I've captured all the invoices. What we have on the left is we have periods of time. Current means paid within 30 days, or due within 30 days and not paid yet. Current actually means due now, excuse me. 1 to 30 means it's been 1 to 30 days since we've billed someone. 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days. Longer than 90 days is considered a problem. Longer than 90 days typically means we're going to have trouble collecting, which is why we stop when it gets over 90 days. So if it's 120 days, 150 days, they all go into the over 90 category. And you'll see that these March invoices, this is as of 223, so these March invoices just got um, generated, so they have a due date that's pretty close to 223, so they're in this opening group. And then we have items that were invoiced um, from that 1 to 30 day group. So you can see that if you keep going out here and I keep billing farther and farther out, or I have receivables that are on the books longer and longer, that we're going to get items grouped here by how old they are. And the follow-up for the business owner is the older the receivable and also the larger the dollar amount, that's what you're going to consider when you're thinking about following up with people who owe you money calling them, sending them a letter, and unfortunately getting uh, your legal area involved if you need to collect money that's really, really been outstanding a long time. So it says up here, this fiscal year to date, I refresh the screen, this fiscal year to date, here's today's date, 223. The intervals are every 30 days, that's how the aging schedule is set up, through days past due 90. Now you can change that to put the past due date out longer, but 90 days or longer usually is grouped together unless you're in an industry where people take a real long time, it's a real long time meaning longer than 90 days. I want to go on and talk about the next subject, which is bank reconciliation. So I'm going to flip over to the next tab, and you'll notice here that we have several things going on that are going to affect the bank reconciliation. We're, we're writing, we're doing bill payment, we're writing checks, we're also handling deposits. So let's talk about bill payment first. So I want to pay some bills and write checks to vendors. So the screen I'm going to go into is vendor pay bill. I'm going to click on the bill, assign a check number, pay the bill, and I want it to let me assign the check number. So I'm going to go to vendors at the top. It says enter bill if it's a new bill. I'm going to go to pay bill. And you can see here that I've got invoices that I've received that I haven't paid yet. So I've got a truck repair invoice on the 8th, my business license, State Farm insurance, insurance, and i got to pay my accountant. So I'm going to put a check by City of Kirkwood. 
for that $125. You can see that that line gets highlighted and $125 is here in the bottom. I could pay all these bills if I wanted to. No discount applies. I'm going to pay by check. I need to assign a check number. It adjusts my ending balance. So I'm going to hit down here, save and close, and I'm going to get a command. How do you want to assign check numbers? It says let me assign check number and this is going to be check number 104 and I'm going to hit OK. Transactions more than 30 days in the future. I'm going to hit are you sure you want to make the change? Yes. So we get a screen pop up that says I've made a payment through checking. I've written a check. Check number 104. Here's the due date. Here's the vendor. Here's the amount paid. I'm going to hit done. I'm not going to pay more bills. So if I were to go over to my check register, I'm going to see some of the payroll liability that we did on a prior video right here. And I'm going to see that I'm going to see also that I've written five checks so far. And also that I've made a deposit. And I made that deposit at the end of March because I want to illustrate a deposit in transit. So I'm going to close up this section of the report. And now I want to talk about reconciling. So let's talk about bank reconciliation. And bear in mind that for 2011, when I started the business, I haven't done any reconciling yet. So for bank reconciliation, you're going to see a button called Reconcile on the home page of QuickBooks. So I'm going to click on Reconcile. It says select an account to reconcile checking. We only have one. And enter the ending balance from your account statement. The only activity that we did in January, and we're doing January 31st, is we did the funding of the business $50,000. Now, I'm going to add in something that's not in the checkbook yet, and we all see it typically in our bank statement. It says, any, enter any service charge or interest earned. Well, I don't have any investments in the books yet, so I didn't earn any interest. But I am going to say that I had a $5 service charge on the 31st, and that that went into the checking account. And I've got to assign an expense to it, so I'm going to call it bank service charges. So, checking account, end of January, $50,000 ending balance. That's when I entered from the checkbook. That was the only activity that we had in January was that cash deposit when we funded the business. We also put in other assets besides cash. $5 service charge that posted at the end of the month for the bank statement. And I'm going to post that to bank service charges and I'm going to hit continue. QuickBooks does a really nice job of giving you tools to do your reconciliation because what you've got on the left here is for the period 131, checks and payments. So here's all the checks and any direct debits that have gone through. Here are deposits and credits that have happened. And you can see if we look at the dates that there's only one transaction that's happened for January, in the month of January, and it was that $50,000 deposit. And you'll also see that we've got a difference because we've got a service charge of $5. We've got an ending balance of $50,000 and a cleared balance of $5. So we've got a difference, $50,005. Now, if I put a check by the $50,000 to say this is what appeared on the bank statement, my checkbook balance is still $5 different than my cleared balance, and by cleared I mean difference in the bank statement. The reason that I have that difference is that $5 service charge reduced my bank account balance, but it hasn't been posted to the accounting records yet. 
so that my bank balance is lower than the book by five dollars. So let's try to figure out a way to fix that. I wonder if I can go into here and type in something. You'll see that when I try to access, other than checking off things, I can't make any, I can't add any deposits and I can't add any checks or payments to this page. So what if I go, hit go to? Go to only works if I click on one of these transactions that I want to go investigate. What if I hit modify? To select an account to reconcile, enter the ending balance, it basically takes me back to where I was. So that's not working. Well, what if I hit this button and it just takes me out of it? Let's go back in. It says that I still haven't reconciled yet, but what I can do is go into my check register. And what I'm going to see is that if I go all the way up to the top and I look at the end of January, I don't have that $5 bank service charge posting yet. So I wonder what would happen if I got out of here and I went into company, make journal entry. Okay. I'm going to date the journal entry as of the end of January. And I'm going to go to my bank service charge expense account. I'm going to debit at $5, and I'm going to say bank statement service charge, January 2011. And in fact, I'm going to copy that explanation down to the next line. You should have a memo entry on every single debit and credit. The account that I'm going to post it to is checking. 131, bank service charge 5. Checking account reduced by five. I'm going to hit save and close. Let's go back to my check register. I'm going to go up to January 31st, and now I see that five dollars as a debit, reducing the bank account. What if I try to reconcile now? I'm going to go to reconciliation, reconcile. 131. There's my uh, ending balance, which should now be. Forty nine nine five for January because of that five dollars. Let's hit continue and see what happens. What you see now is is that that five dollars is there on this line, and we see that we've got our same deposits, our same checks. But what if I check on that? It's out of balance. I've got a difference. I wonder why. Well, let's get out of this transaction. What if I hit reconcile and I put that $50,000 ending balance that I originally had? And I hit continue. Now I'm off by $10 because I have the $5 payment sitting there too. Here's another possible solution. I reduce the ending balance on my bank, on my book, my checkbook, to account for the service charge for $49,995. And I see that because I checked this deposit, that I now have the $50,000 cash deposit check that's clearing my checkbook. I have not checked off the $5 service charge. It says the $5 service charge here instead. If I hit save and close, let's see what happens. That's just a little warning light to do online banking. Congratulations, your account is balanced. All marked items, the 50000 have been cleared in the account register. And you can see that the $50,000 went away. Select the type of reconciliation report you'd like to see. I'm going to hit both, and I'm going to hit display. And hit OK. And it says for January 31st, beginning balance zero, that's when I started my business. Clear transactions 
checks and payments, there's that $5 service charge. There's the $50,000 depart deposit. There's my ending balance, which now has a book balance matching the bank balance. There's the $5 service charge. There's the ending balance, $49,990. Beginning balance for the next month. It says beginning balance because we've still got this transaction hanging around there that we haven't checked off, which is actually an error now. So I'm going to close this out. Finally, I went back to the check register, and look what happened. The bank reconciliation automatically posted that $5. I didn't need to put in a general, this general journal entry, this manual journal entry at all. In fact, I double counted it. So when you reconcile and you click on the statement that you had service charges posting, when the account is reconciled, QuickBooks automatically posts that service charge and checks it as being a cleared item. So I didn't even need this journal entry. I wonder how I can get rid of it. Let's go back to Company, Make Journal Entries. Hit OK. I'm going to go back to the previous one. <clears throat> There's my entry. Well, why don't I just make an entry to undo it? Why don't I increase checking $5? And why don't I hit bank service charge by going to the expense category and credit that? And I'm going to put reverse manual entry to the January 2011 bank service charge of $5. I'm going to put the same entry below. And I'm going to hit save and close. Do we want, we've changed the transaction, we changed the journal entry. Do you want to record the transaction? Let's look at it one more time. Bank service charge, debit credit, checking debit credit, I'm going to hit yes. Now if I go into my check register, and I go back up to January, I'm going to see that I've reversed out the impact of manually entering that service charge. I didn't need to do it, because QuickBooks automatically posted it and marked it as clear. That's the end of QuickBooks 7. Continuous Classroom is where we have weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll see a complete list of the videos on our website. For one-on-one -on -one live tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the site. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.